Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making a rich and creamy tomato soup. So let's get started. To make this recipe, you need two cans of whole peeled tomatoes, onion, garlic, olive oil, a little butter, a dash of sugar, some stock or water, cream, salt and pepper, basil, and any other herbs that you love. First off, we're gonna do some prep work. Grab a Dutch oven or a big pot. We're gonna make a lot of soup, so you don't want a little tiny pot that's overflowing. Good tomato soup has tons of flavor. So to get that started, I'm chopping up one and a little bit extra of uh, yellow onion. Just give it like a nice chop. My twins, Lachlan and George, are obsessed with tomato soup. Today we're basically snowed in. There's like black ice on the road. It is a wintry day. This is like the perfect thing to warm you up on the inside and get to all those cozy vibes. My eyes! <laughs> Onion aside, now it's time for six cloves or more of garlic. You can let me know in the comments what you would be adding to this recipe. I'm gonna give my garlic a good smash, kind of release the oils and also release that papery skin. Give it a good mince. Everything's all chopped up. Now we're gonna melt some butter and olive oil in our big pot. Let's go. Open that Dutch oven up. We're adding two tablespoons of butter right into the pot, along with three tablespoons of olive oil. Let's set this over medium heat. As soon as the butter is melted, we can start adding in the onion and get to cooking. My butter is melted, it smells amazing already. I'm gonna add the onion in and get to stirring. It needs to be translucent and softened before we do anything else. Okay. So you'll be stirring occasionally for about eight minutes and during this time, the onion's sugars are breaking down and you're getting a wonderful like depth of flavor added to the soup. I'm not adding the garlic yet because of course it would really get burnt, crispy, and bitter if it was added along with the onion. The onion takes a long time for those sugars to break down. The garlic cooks and burns like that. While that cooks, I'm gonna open up my two cans of tomatoes. Tomato soup is typically something you make during the winter and um, winter time is not when tomatoes are best. These tomatoes are canned at peak freshness. It's a little taste of summer in the winter or fall or spring. If you were lucky enough to can your tomatoes that you grew this summer, this is a great time to use them. Adding the garlic. In here we want to stir constantly. You do not want to have any burnt garlic in this tomato soup. Two things can make your tomato soup bitter. One would be burning the garlic and the other one is doing something with your olive oil. I'll talk about that later, but this can ruin everything. It's so crazy. Cook the garlic for about five minutes while stirring pretty regularly. You want this to be very aromatic without burning it. Just about five minutes later, we're ready to add the tomatoes in carefully so they don't splatter on you. There's a lot of delicious juice in here. We will not waste this. Stir that in. The liquid we add to this soup could be so many different things. It could be water if you want it just plain. It could be chicken stock. I'm using veggie stock today. There we go, all the tomato flavors out. Right now I'm gonna add the remaining stock, which would be three cups in total. So I added like a third of a cup already. <laughs> there we go. I'm also gonna add a tablespoon of sugar. You could add a little bit more if you wanted to. The sugar works with the tomatoes and makes some magic happen. A lot of the time when you've gone to a restaurant and had like mind blowing tomato soup, they added a little extra sugar, a little extra salt, a little extra cream. I'm also adding some black pepper. It's kind of to taste, but you know, at least a quarter of a teaspoon. We're gonna bring this to a boil and then let it simmer for about half an hour. It's gonna reduce the liquid and it just intensify all of the flavors. Then we'll talk about the consistency and mixing and what could go wrong. I am also adding a generous pinch of salt right now. We'll add more to taste later. It's always better to add salt towards the beginning of a recipe as opposed to the end. It gives it more time to work its way all the way through and not just be like a superficial taste on a couple things. Once this comes to a boil, we're gonna reduce to a simmer and let that hang out for half an hour. We're adding some fresh basil to this at the very end, but you can definitely add some of your favorite spices to this too. I'm adding a pinch of dried thyme, a little bit of oregano. You could add any of your favorites to this and it'll be delicious or leave it plain, up to you. And stir that in. Now it'll simmer and infuse and just be a little bit more delicious. 
Okay, my soup reduced all those flavors really melded together and I tasted it and it's delicious already. We're not even done yet. The one thing is there's a lot of texture on the soup. So you have a couple options. You could use a potato ricer or a masher and just mash it all together. I'm gonna use an immersion blender. And the one thing that can go wrong on this soup is over blending it. So if you put it into a blender, what happens with some brands of olive oil is they become incredibly bitter, like mind bendingly bitter. So don't do that. Don't over blend your soup or use veggie oil instead. Okay, so I'm just gonna blend this up just to get some like nice silky texture. Hmm, this is so fun. <laughs> We're finishing this off with a little bit of cream. You can also add some salt and pepper to taste at the very end. Stir that in and the cream adds so much richness and mouthfeel and really balances out the acid from the tomatoes. Mmm. Our tomato soup is just about ready, but we're gonna give it a taste. Let's see if we need any more salt in this. That is really nice. Get a ladle. Fill your bowls up. This is a great moment for some homemade crunchy croutons or like a nice big crusty loaf of bread. And then a little torn basil to finish it off and you're ready to enjoy. That is the perfect remedy for a cold day. It is delicious. I hope you get a chance to make this recipe and if you like this video, check out my cozy playlist.